How you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the newer features in Reaper 4.5. And in this video, I want to show you stretch markers on a multi-miked drum kit. We have a multi mic kit in front of us here with kick, snare, toms, overheads, and rooms. And we want to quantize this or put it on the grid using stretch markers. Let's see what it sounds like now against a click. You'll notice it's not very tight with the click. So let's fix that using stretch markers. First thing we're going to do is we're going to group all these items. Just select them all, right click, go to group, group items. So now they behave as one item. Then we're going to choose what's going to trigger everything being cut on the grid. In other words, I'm going to use the kick mic, the snare mic, the overheads, the room. I prefer to use the kick and snare mics. And if there's some tom hits, maybe add those as well. But for this, I'm just going to do kick and snare and not worry about hi-hats or cymbals. Those can run freely. So we want to trigger this with the kick mic and the snare mic. So let's start off with the snare mic. Let's turn off grouping and just grab the snare track. Let's zoom in. And now we're going to split this dynamically. So right click, go to item processing, and choose dynamic split items. That opens up this dialog where we can split items based on the transients. So let's turn this off, the gate stuff, and just turn on the transients. And we're going to choose which transients are selected based on here. Transient sensitivity, click that. In fact, we can close this now. Bring the threshold all the way up and bring it down until these green lines grab the transients, in this case, the snare drum. So bring it down low enough just so it grabs all the snare hits. And we'll slide through, make sure it has all of them. That looks pretty good. So now we'll go back to dynamic split. We can close this. And these dotted lines represent where it's going to be split. Make sure that looks good, and it does. So now typically, we would split this, but there's a new option here. Instead of split selected items, we could choose replace stretch markers in selected items. That's going to place new stretch markers where it would have split them. But there's an option below that, which is even better. Replace stretch markers in selected items and add to grouped items. That's going to split all grouped items in the same places based on our snare track. So let's choose this, and now we'll hit split. And notice, not only did it add stretch markers to the snare track, but all the other grouped items as well, even though the group is turned off over here. So that's why we made the group, because we want these items to stretch together. If we grab this one, all the drums move together, which is kind of important for phase purposes. So now we need to do the kick drum. Let's turn off our group again, select the kick drum, but we have to do this a bit differently. Let me show you why. Right click, item processing, dynamic split items. If we hit this, our stretch markers were removed. And if we add new ones like this, the snare ones are gone from the kick track. We don't want that. So the way around that is to duplicate the kick track first, Put it on top and work on this one instead. Dynamic split. Set the transient sensitivity. Bring it up and bring it down just to get all the kicks. Zoom in. Make sure we got all those kick tracks and none of this extra stuff here. If we go too low, get a lot of miss hits. So just big enough to get all the kicks. That looks good. So again, replace stretch markers in selected items 
and add to grouped items. Select that, hit split, and all the kick transients were added to all the tracks. But again, we lost the snare on this track, but that's okay, because that was a duplicated kick track. We don't need it anymore. In fact, let's delete it. Great. Now all the original tracks are back, and they're all split based on the kick and snare hits. Turn grouping back on, and we can grab any of them and move them around freely. That, that. So we can move them around to feel more in the pocket, or turn snapping on and put them right on the grid. Just grab them, and they snap right to the grid. Here, here. But a quicker way of doing it, undo that, is to select them all, right click, go to stretch markers, and choose snap stretch markers to grid. If we do that, make sure the grid is set to an appropriate value, in this case, 16th notes. Snap stretch markers to grid, and they're all snapped to the grid. So now if we hear it back with the click turned on, they should lock perfectly. That's a bit off right there. That's going to happen if the drummer is so far off the click that Reaper thinks it's a different 16th note. So in those situations, grab it with snapping turned on and move it manually. This one too. And this one. This one as well. These are all a bit off. Just snap them to a different 16th note. That's pretty good. Back to the beginning. Now the beauty of doing it this way, using stretch markers, is we don't have to use each one. We can remove some to keep the drummer's original feel. For instance, on these double kicks, If he drags them a bit, we can just delete them, holding down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, and the original feel between these two kicks is preserved. But the next snare moves back to the grid. Same with this one. And this one. And it's especially good for fills. Let's say this fill sounded more natural the way the drummer played it. We can remove these two notes right here, this one and this one. And now the downbeat is still on the grid along with the next kick, but everything in between is the way the drummer played it. So it might sound more natural to keep his feel. Same with this one, and this one, this one, and the same thing with this drum fill. You can remove this one, this one, and this one. But it'll always stay on the grid because the beginning and the end both land there. Just during the fill, it gets a little bit looser. So it's a great way of retaining your drummer's feel while still putting them on the grid. So that's pretty much it. That's using stretch markers to quantize a multi-mic drum recording. I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.